quite recent poem, uh, rather courageously entitled Civilization, <laughs> as though I'm going to catch all of that in less than a page. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do something here that uh, David has been told about. We haven't, we, haven't, we haven't done it at all, but I, I explained to him a couple of hours ago. This thing begins with, oh, something like 25 lines having to do with a, a young girl in China 9,000 years ago picking up the, the wing bone of a bird and blowing into it. And we, this has survived as our first known musical instrument. 9,000 years old. And so the 28 lines or so that, that are about that, uh, David and I are going to try a little duet. Uh, we're going to use that instrument because it's softer and quieter. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm not going to let my son uh, drown me out. <laughs> Can't have that. So we're we're going to make a kind of duet out of out of these lines, and I'll, I'll give my kind of signal when we're through that part of the poem, because it's going to go on. What this poem is really about is civilization coming around in, in terms of musical metaphor. The little flute, all the airiness, this lovely sense of the spiritual and the spirit moving up there. But what are we going to do with Earth? Okay, now we're going to, we're going to move on to Greek shepherds taking the guts of animals, stretching them out and making strings and grounding this stuff in it. Okay, out of that we're going to get civilization. All right, this begins with a little epigraph. Quotation out of, of all things, the Los Angeles Times. It's beautiful. It's just quiet, old New York. I once in a while like to begin poems that way, not knowing where they're going to go. I didn't know this about it. something as broad as civilization. Here's the quote. Archaeologists in China have found the world's oldest playable musical instrument, a 9,000-year-old flute carved from the wing bone of a crane. Ah, <coughs> Los Angeles Times. Okay. Long before Greeks measured to mark the frets on their boots, dividing tight strings by exactness of tones. Long before that, someone in China, probably a girl with time and some need to walk alone near the sea, lifted to lips the hollow wing bone of a crane and blew through it. No thought of why, Mixing sky air that lifts wings and sleeves with the unseen source of life they call breath. Imagine the whistles and arcing bird cries these people learned to make as they breathed through bones with scaled apertures and lengths that drilled little holes where fingers could find the tunes beyond bird song. They began composing. How plaintive and lonely the wordless sounds must have been as they called a thin rose, then drifted in, into, and through the bow leaves, over rocks, or hung like clouds of smoke in rafters, then vanished as softly as morning mist off the Yangtze. Thoughts. Have remembered. Uh, I got this. Uh, but the tunes lacked grounding, lacked sounds that tied light melodies down to stone floor, soil, and warm flesh of hands. Centuries later, long miles westward, high up in Greece, getting out of the wind. Chapped hands of shepherds and goat herds tugged animal guts and dried them and learned to snap their lengths of string 
to vibrate them against flat wood, later hollowed out, to resonate the deeper tones for love or despair that Athenian throats would sing if only they could. The sweaty pluck and thrum of finger and hand hefted earth sounds upward, rising to meet the vibrato of long breaths ringing out of that hollow wind boom. And the melody created dialogue, Greek harmony, music, compassion, a transcendence of self. Thank you.